Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there tonight. You had yourselves a wonderful day and a great beginning to your week out there. I got you an evening update, and I know I was not expecting to make a video tonight either, but here we are. And we're here to discuss the tropics. We've had some significant shifts in models today, so we're going to break it all down for you folks. What does this mean? What's changed since the video this morning or the video yesterday morning? We'll talk about it all and why I think this significant shift we've seen today in model guidance has legs. I really do think it does. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is talk about what's in front of you is real-time observations. What's going on out there in the Atlantic right now? We'll go over the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Are they dubbing an area of interest right now? I'll go on and answer that for you. They are not right at this moment, but that could change sometime overnight into tomorrow. We'll go over the Euro and the GFS. We'll compare both models, uh, talk about what it's showing on its latest uh, operational runs from this afternoon, even to this evening. Um, we'll go over all the ensemble guidance and then we'll speak on the Climate Prediction Center. And we're going to spend some time on that and kind of just spend some time tipping our hat to them because this, there's, there's a potential that they absolutely nailed this about six or seven days ago. So we'll speak on that. Don't want to speak too much on it right this second and let this intro uh, drag on for another minute or so. So we're going to talk a little bit about steering currents too. I know normally I do not speak on that uh, until we actually have a trackable system, but we're going to you know talk a little bit about it in this video also. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And if anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. So what you're looking at here is uh, the main development region, the MDR for short, Tropical Atlantic, or you can just call it the, tro uh, the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So uh, we got uh, Africa right here. Okay. Africa. We got the Lesser Antilles and, you know, the gateway to the Caribbean over here. And then we got, you know, everything in between, which is the Tropical Atlantic. So... We'll get this back off your screen. This area right here is an area of the Atlantic that we really begin to watch as we get closer to late August and then the first half of September. Um, this is when we have to watch for these long tracked hurricanes, tropical cyclones, etc. So there's nothing that's a, a put together tropical cyclone out there right at this second. And by the way, our next name storm is the F name Francine. Okay. Seems like it's been a decade since we were talking about Ernesto, but it really was just, what, seven to ten days ago. But the next name storm is Francine. So do we have Francine out there right now? Absolutely not. But what we do have is a lot of shower and storm action ongoing. And I noticed this this morning when we made a video, I kind of briefly mentioned it, that it looked like the main development uh, region was... Uh, about as active as it's been for the last several days and it continues to be pretty active out there this evening you're getting these areas and you know these colors you're seeing on the map these uh reds yellows and the blacks you're seeing especially like in this area and this area this indicates colder cloud tops which mean means we have a sustained deep convection out here taller updrafts and what i'm trying to say is we have or you can call it organized or you can call it you know unorganized but in general, we have a pretty large area of shower and storm activity out here in the Atlantic. Now, the next thing you watch for is any of these particular areas right here, right here, or right here, or somewhere in between, going to kind of consolidate into one piece of energy and then eventually develop some sort of low-level circulation and become a tropical cyclone, tropical depression. Uh, and that's what we're watching for. Here in the short term, even the medium term, we don't expect that. But we're having some significant shifts in model guides right now. And I think that anything is on the table, even in the shorter to medium term. So this is what's going on right now. So to sum up that minute and a half, two minutes of talking, there's a lot in shower and storm activity out here in the main development region right at this second. So we get this back off our screen. We continue to move forward. All right. So the latest from the National Hurricane Center, and we'll go on and update this. And there's another update that comes out in about 45 minutes. And sure enough, I wouldn't be surprised if... They uh, put a yellow area on this map right after I drop this video and say, hey, there's a 20% chance of a tropical cyclone developing sometime in the next seven days. But as of right now, the time I'm making this video, it says tropical cyclone activity is not expected during the next seven days. I could see this changing between now and the next several updates into tomorrow. I could. As of now, time making this video, we do not see it. But if the, the 7.30, 8 p.m. update, they put an area of interest up, it would not shock me at all. 
Do I think they are? I don't, but it wouldn't shock me at all. So this is what we have right now. So let's go over the latest European model. Okay, this ran this afternoon. And what you're looking at here, um, the areas in yellow and orange is energy in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So when we're looking for it like a weak tropical wave that you're not going to see very well in the precipitation output, uh, you really look at this and this will kind of actually show a spin out here with the wind barbs and just kind of show where a dominant piece of energy is. So the euro really caused not an uproar, but it caused a peak in excitement, not excitement, but interest is what I meant to say. Excitement maybe for some people just because, you know, tracking the tropics can be exciting for a weather nerd like me. Of course, we're not pulling for the one of those worst case scenarios where a hurricane hits land, but it definitely peaked a lot of interest out here and awareness, I would say. So we'll start this off for tomorrow afternoon, August the 27th. Not a whole lot going on. I want you to keep your eyes uh down here in this region right in here okay and you're gonna watch you know some colors kind of start to come together the yellows and the orange so we keep this going we get into wednesday all right we get into thursday and then watch how this area kind of goes into that circled area i drew here it's not much but you can see that there's a little bit of a spin going on it's kind of an open wave right here friday and then you see those two dominant vortices sort of circling around one another and then we get into all the way into next Sunday. I mean, we're six days away. This is the morning of September 1st. Okay, we're moving past August at this point. I don't think we're going to have another named storm uh, the rest of August, by the way. I think our next named storm will come in September. Uh, but uh, I'll let you know if something changes with that thinking. But as of now, that's what I'm thinking. We're getting into the evening of September 1st. And now you can really see with your own eyes here, about a week from today, you're starting to get a dominant piece of energy getting closer to the Leeward Islands and just the Lesser Antilles in general. Okay, and we stop it there. And we'll go on and keep it going. We'll take it all the way to about oh, 10 days from now. This is 10 days from right now. So next Thursday morning, September the 5th, we have a tropical storm just uh, south of Puerto Rico. That's what that is. In fact, we look at the precipitation output here and you can see it you know, as far as the greens and the yellows on your screen, which might be more appealing to, to others when you're trying to figure out these tropical systems as far as what you're seeing on the screen here. But you can see the L here. So 1,007 millibar low, that's like a depression, maybe weak tropical storm. See how that number begins to drop here as we're getting into midway next week, not this week. And then it deepens all the way to a 999 millibar low tropical storm, I would say, just south of Puerto Rico next Thursday morning, September the 5th. Um, so yeah, um, this could be something that we need to watch. Now, if we look at the GFS, it's the latest GFS, right? And we're going to pause it in a certain section of this and for a reason. So, uh, hang tight here for a minute and I got you covered, but we start it for Tuesday morning. Okay. Keep your eye kind of right into here. Okay. We get into Thursday morning. And the GFS suddenly wants to really develop this quicker. Now, I would say even where this energy is right here, it's still not really a tropical depression or anything. But, you know, we get into Saturday, we get into Sunday morning, and same thing as the Euro now. Suddenly, we have an area we need to pay attention to, and it gets all the way to right here, okay? I'm actually going to stop this right here this is for next monday morning so about six and a half days from right now right um let's look at the let's go back four runs one two three four okay this was four runs ago all right there's nothing there let's go to the current run one two three four all of a sudden it's initializing like the euro in the same time frame that's a significant four run change and especially from just last run, which was this afternoon's GFS run to this evening's run, that's a significant shift. It tells me that models are latching on to something here. And then we take it and whatever this is gets and runs right into the Lesser Antilles. Now we look at the actual output that's going to show us the L on the screen and how actually strong this is as far as millibars. And here it comes. Here it comes on your screen right here. This is next Monday evening. So this is like a week from right now, September 3rd, September 2nd. And it has almost a hurricane. I would say this is a tropical storm going right into the Lesser Antilles uh, next Tuesday evening. And then it's slipping into the Caribbean, not strengthening much, but then begins to strengthen. And then we're getting about 10 days out, unreliable time frame. But we got a hurricane 
just south of Puerto Rico at this point, and then this is turning north, and it looks like it's about to head on out to sea. But I'm not sure. that This is as far out as the GFS has ran, uh, but it looks like it finds an opening and takes an almost uh, the same route as Ernesto took and begins to head out to sea. Now, there's a lot of people already saying that they think this is going to go out to sea, but of course, we don't know that for sure. But I can tell you, this thing, the models have really flipped. Um, it, it's been pretty wild to see. And sure enough, if you look at the EPS, the European Ensemble, which remember makes up 51 members, and we get this in motion, and this is the time frame here. It says Saturday OOZ. This stands for Friday evening, this coming Friday evening, 108 hours from right now. And watch out all those L's pop up on your screen. Um, that's a lot of members now. And some of them, you know, are pretty far south into the Caribbean. Some of them get pretty far north. And we go about 10 days out. And we have some pretty strong members in here. I mean, some like sub 970 millibar hurricanes, some strong members here in the Southwest Atlantic. We got a lot of members clustered up pretty far south. But, you know, we go on to take this past 10 days just, just to do it here. Um, oh, yeah, it can't go past 10 days. I don't know what I'm thinking, guys. There's some outputs that will let us go past 10 days. But we'll stop it here. We, this is a reliable, more re a responsible territory to stop it anyways. But here it is. We got a, we got a pretty decent spread. And we actually have signals for another wave behind this. Is this the start to a very active time frame? It could be. Okay. Now we turn around and we look at the, and let's see if we actually have the 18Z. Uh, it only goes 108 hours out. But 108 hours out, you're already initializing uh, some sort of tropical system in the in the central MDR. And if we go back and actually look and compare this with the 12, let's actually zoom into this. We can, we can make this a little bit better here. All right, so this is the Central Atlantic, right, 18Z. Now let's go and look at the same time frame for 12Z and see how different it looks here. Yeah, so you see the uptick. So this is the run prior to the current run, right? And we look at the current run, same time frame, right, 18Z. See how it upticks? So that tells us the models are starting to get more confident that something's going to get going. If you look at the European Ensemble as far as the probability of a tropical depression forming, uh, this is the time frame up here, so between Monday morning and Thursday morning, so, you know, kind of right now, right? Uh, chances are low, but watch as we start to get into, make sure I'm saying this right. No, th I'm sorry, this is between now and basically the next seven days, right? So, let's just go on and go to the next 10 days. So, between now and the next 10 days, the European Ensemble output here is saying, hey, there's a... Uh, a 70 to 80 percent chance of a tropical depression forming right here in sort of the western MDR main development region the western Atlantic right here so there's also another signal for a wave behind it but you know confidence is increasing for some sort of tropical cyclone forming in this area now I want to say this really quick and you know we're, we're, we're cruising through this pretty fast right but I want to say this pretty quick so this was the um, the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. They issued this back on the 20th, guys. So this is what, six uh, six days away? I'm sorry, six days ago. I'm a little rusty on my evening videos, if you guys can't tell. Um, but uh, six days ago, they issued this. I think they'll reissue another one tomorrow, maybe. We'll see what happens. And they said, uh, they said from week two, all right, August 28th through September 3rd, that in this burgundy, kind of this dark red burgundy color right here, there was a 60% chance of a tropical cyc cyclone of tropical depression or greater strength forming in this area. Okay, they were very confident, over a 50% chance of it. And then from the 4th through the 10th, which, you know, we're still kind of far out from, they think there's a 40% chance or higher of a tropical system being in this area, a tropical cyclone, which they're basically saying, when they say tropical cyclone, they mean a tropical depression or higher in strength. So you got tropical wave, depression. When it gets to when it gets dubbed a depression, it has a defined low-level circulation, which makes it a tropical cyclone. Then you go from a depression to a tropical storm, which gives us a gives us a name storm. Then it goes to a category one hurricane and goes all the way up to category five. There is no category six, despite what you hear on TikTok. <laughs> but uh, anyways. In that burgundy area, that's where you have a 60% chance or higher for a tropical cyclone to form between the 28th through the 3rd of September. And listen, they said this back on the 20th of August. 
And folks, what's happening? Well, you're getting a sudden uptick and increased chances and model guidance that we are going to have a tropical system in this exact same time frame in this exact same area just about. So I guess why I'm showing you this is there are the they are the experts for a reason. I've showed this and in my head, I haven't really said it much out loud, but I've kind of doubted this to actually happen. And here it is. Um, and of course, it hasn't ha happened for sure. But this would be pretty impressive um, if this actually ends up happening in this area in this time frame. It really will. So, you know, uh, last thing we'll, we'll talk about here is a lot of people are writing the system off already. So even if it forms down here, they think that, hey, this thing's heading on out to sea. Now, I can understand their thinking on that. But we're getting into late this work week. We are getting into Friday. We're getting into Saturday. We're getting into this weekend. We got all the way to, uh, we're all the way to Sunday morning at this point. Okay, the morning of September the 1st. Our tropical system, if there is one, is probably going to be, I don't know, somewhere in here maybe. Right? So there's already this big trough digging down, which models are very confident on. And this sort of breaks up this ridge, right? So you see, you got this big trough diving down right here. All right, you got ridging right here, ridging right here. And it kind of creates this wide open weakness right here. And I'm not going to dive down, you know, I'm sorry, dive, dive much into the steering currents around these features, but I will say flow around ridging is going to go like this. Okay, flow around this trough is going to go like this. But in general, just like Ernesto kind of, if you got this low right here, it's already starting to feel that weakness a little bit. And if you keep going, say if this gets pretty strong around the, right in the southwest Atlantic, you keep this going, this trough digs down. And uh, potentially just kind of creates an opening here. But if you notice even right here, you know, this is past seven, eight days out. You still got some light ridging right here. But then that ridging sort of, you know, tries to become light. And if you certainly do have a strong tropical system, say like a hurricane right in here, if it's strong, I don't know if this light ridging in place is going to prevent it from not turning. Stronger tropical system wants to gain latitude. But I do think that this trough right here, the still kind of there but starting to decay, um, it's going to influence the steering of whatever forms down here. But it, there's also an opportunity that it does not because this trough could potentially just weaken and then a ridge takes over this area and then steers whatever tropical system potentially can be there, you know, maybe uh, further west. So there's a lot of players out here. There's no point in diving too much deeper into all this because, I mean... We don't, we're not tracking anything yet, but did want to come on here and give you guys an update. I can't promise that I'm going to have evening updates tomorrow and the next day because I got soccer tomorrow night and I got church uh, Wednesday night. But uh, after that, it might be full send ahead, full send ahead. So we'll definitely figure it out. I, I definitely need to, um, I need to make this video anyways because I feel like I'm rusty in my evening videos. I've been twisting up words like crazy in this video. So uh, this was a nice, um, uh, freshening up, if you will, video for me for the nighttime video. So God bless all y'all. Y'all have a wonderful evening and I'll talk to you again in the morning. God bless.